Hey guys, it's Ryan, AKA Live Free and Shred. And today, let's see it in the background. Uh, I'm gonna come at you with a one year review and bike check of my 2021 custom built Trek Slash. Technically it's a Trek Slash 8, but like I said, it's custom built, so you'll see the spec. I call it a Trek slash 8.9 XT slash XTR. You'll see when I go over the spec. Uh, I'll show you the bike quick. I'll go over what parts I put on, why I put them on, and then I'll tell you what I think about the bike, what it does good, what I like about it, what I don't like about it, pros, cons, all the all of the things will go over all of it all right so here's my 2021 trek slash originally was built up as a slash frame set and you can tell that because it doesn't have any eight nine seven eight nine it just says slash so this wasn't a complete ever this was a frame set, an alloy frame set that I got from Trek. I uh, waited a long time for it. I think I ordered it October. It didn't show up until about May. So May of 2021 is when I built this bike up. And I took a decent amount of parts, actually, well, not really. I took a few parts off of my Stumpy Evo and put them on here. But this bike, uh, this bike replaced my stumpy evo like all my other bike checks we'll start from the top we have standard renthal fat bar 31.8 they are 20 millimeter rise i cut all my bars to 780 wide and then we've got it on a renthal apex stem now you wouldn't believe me if i told you this but this stem has been on all of my bikes since my 2016 Stump Jumper 29er. So it's a 40 millimeter long. And he's stock headset. Got the original Ergon GE1 Slims without all the siping. Uh, I'm a crazy person and I ordered like 25 pairs of them. And I've, this is my last set. And I'm holding strong. So, PNW loam lever for the dropper. And we'll go to the brakes next. I got Shimano Saint brakes. And 180 rotors front and rear on this bike. Just because I have 180 rotors on my fuel as well, and I don't, if I ever want to change anything, I have the same cassette and the same brake rotor size on both bikes. It's an easy switch. I don't have to mess with the adapters and spacers and lining up calipers and all that stuff. So, XTR 12 speed shifter. Uh, I always get the most expensive shifter that I can either get my hands on or get uh, afford because the shifter makes all the difference in the field the way the drivetrain is. For all I care, I would run an SLX or anything that I can get my hands on derailleur. But in this case, we're running the Shimano XT GS long cage derailleur with a 10 a 1051 XT cassette, oval 32 wolf tooth on 165 millimeter XT cranks. Bontrager line elite post. Can't really see it, but it's a 34.9 post and Aeolus, Bontrager Aeolus comp saddle. Wheels and tires, NVM730 wheels, laced to DT Swiss 240S hubs. So 
240S. It's got the ratchet, um, the ratchet drive, whatever they call it. Ratchet system, 54 points. I'll give it a spin for you. You know, pretty pretty standard. It's not like I have fancy hydras or anything on here. A Cush Core Pro in the rear only. No insert in the front. Tire pressures, 28 or 29 PSI and two to three less in the front. So 25 to 27 is usually about what I run depending on what I'm riding. And I guess last but not least is suspension. I am a suspension nerd and I rode the 9.8 XT that comes with the Zeb Select Plus. So it just has one um, compression knob. Uh, I didn't like it, it was too stiff. Uh, I'm only 150, 55 pounds. Uh, this is a size medium, by the way. So, I don't know if I mentioned that in the beginning, but I didn't like the Zeb, it was too stiff. So I went with a, obviously the color gives it away, a Lyric Ultimate in 170. So, high and low speed compression. I also run a MRP ramp control in this and I don't remember, I don't my, remember my pressures and, and stuff. I just re, uh, re went over my suspension settings this past week when I went to Highland. And since it was a frame set, it came with the Super Deluxe Ultimate through shaft. And this shock is incredible because I had a coil on this. I didn't like it as much as I like this shock. So I always run it open and I am in the minus setting and my rebound is currently on seven. I had it on eight the other day, which also felt pretty good. Um, I could run it either way, depending on the trails. If it's kind of like fast and chunky, I'll run it on a little bit faster. All right, so one year, one year on this bike. What do I think of it? I think it climbs really well for what it is. The suspension platform is pretty supportive, but also active at the same time. I think I can't really say much more. It climbs pretty good for being a, a 160, 170 bike. Descending. Um, this, this thing, it scares me sometimes because I would say I'm a pretty good rider. I haven't found the limit of this bike yet. The faster you go, the faster it wants to go. The less you hit the brakes, the better it works. The harder you push it, the harder it wants to be pushed. I, I have never ridden a bike like like this one. I'm sure there's some others out there. I just haven't ridden them. I've always ridden, I had a, a bunch of stump jumpers. I've had a meta, I've had, uh, I've ridden enduros. I've ridden all kinds of bikes. And this bike is very impressive. Climbing, descending, it jumps really well. That's super. You can set it up to be a good combination of pop and suppleness and support and it's it's just a really good all-around bike i think you could get into situations where it would be too much bike um i don't think you're going to get into many situations where it's not enough bike so if you guys have any questions any questions at all feel free uh ask them down in the comments i will answer them as best i can and as quickly as i can Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. And I know I haven't made videos in a long time. So again, I appreciate you guys coming, checking out my one year review of the Slash. And 
Thanks for watching. All right, I haven't done this for a while, but keep shredding. Peace.